There's something beautiful about the trust of a child. Little hands reach for dad to pick them up. A cuddle with mom brings a transcendent sense of security to a little one. Nothing can hurt me when I hold my dad's hand. No need to worry when my mom wraps her arms around me. Bright eyes from the moment they are opened, each one precious. The gift of guiding a little soul. These are blessings, not curses. Now imagine this tiny, beautiful, living, awe-provoking image bearer of God being sacrificed on the altar of convenience. This is not a nightmare you can simply wake up from. This is our reality. Abortion is the destruction of a tiny, beautiful, awe-provoking, living image bearer of God, and it testifies to how far we have abandoned God's law and standard. We know abortion is wrong because God has written his law on our hearts. All life is valuable and worthy of protection because the Creator says it is. But we spit in the face of God because we see His gifts as a curse. Our eyes have been darkened. We don't need more godless arguments against abortion. We need revival. How did we let this happen? That hundreds of thousands of little children are being led to the slaughter every year. And what we're most concerned about is not talking about it too much and avoiding the topic because we don't want to offend anybody. How pitiful are we? Listen friends, my allegiance is to God, not man. Many people don't want to hear this. They see this as judgmental, bigoted, and sexist. It's not. In fact, it is the most loving message that even a murderer can be forgiven. Even someone who aided in the destruction of a little child can find hope and reconciliation with God. That's only possible with Jesus. Jesus, fully God and fully man, came to this earth to live a sinless life, a life that we could not live, to die on the cross, a death we deserve to die for our sins against God. You see, because Jesus did that, because he died on the cross for our sins, we can be forgiven. And if we turn from our sins, which means repentance, this idea of repentance, say, God, I'm sorry for my sin, and turn away from it, put our faith in Jesus as our only substitute, as our only savior, we can be forgiven and be given a new identity in him. You see, as much as I want babies to be saved, I want souls to be saved. Uh, if somebody keeps their baby and doesn't abort them and yet they go to hell without knowing the love of Jesus, that's no victory. So, preach the gospel. Point people to the only Savior, to the only person that can forgive them of their sin. And to the creator of all human life and the creator who says that all human life is valuable and worthy of protection. Fight for these little children. They need you.